So this is Dr. Bossi with IS Lab. I'm going to give you a presentation about the natural history of the spine, what to expect and how to get the best out of our spine. And this is an important kind of topic because by the time you're 50 years old, there's only 30% chance you don't have spine problem. By the time you're 70 years old, there's only one to 2% chance that you don't have spine problem. So listen carefully because that will have impact on your personal life. Imagine you have a chart here, and this is our age. We are born at zero. Hopefully, after a wonderful life, we are gone when we are 100 or more. And these are the graduation of our life 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. And this is 100% of our spine capacity, meaning that we are at the best we can be. And surprisingly, people think we have the best kind of spine or musculoskeletal system or activity when you're in your 20s because they see most of these uh, athletes in their 20s. But the, what they don't understand, those athletes need lots of skill. They need lots of practice. They, most of the practice is actually when they're a teenager. If you really want to know when you have the best spine capacity, look at the Olympic gymnasts. They're actually in early teens. So, your maximum spine capacity is actually in your early teens, and we all know when you are born, you have barely any function, and when you are gone, obviously your spine has barely any function. So we know that it starts with zero, goes up, go down. The top is actually in early teenage time. So this is a natural history, and when we get older, obviously our spine capacity goes down. Now. I think it's important, and you should know, and uh, that is hundred percent is for every person is different. So you can't push it up and down. Like send your kids for sport activity, let them be active because whatever they achieve, it's uh, their hundred percent, and from that point it's going down. And meaning that if you have somebody who's a potato couch, that start maybe here or here. So that means in the same age, they have less capacity. That's why it's important to send your kid for the sport. Now I'm going to put as well a line here, now that you understand what this is. Most of us are truly independent. Even if we have like only 25% of our spine capacity, that the independent line here, is really what's important. You want to do things when you are old. When you want to be able to enjoy your life. And you don't have to do rock climbing or do Olympic gymnastics to do that. Now, and now it makes sense that if you have a higher spine capacity, it takes you longer to drop below the line that you need help. And but there's another important fact that healthy spine habit put you push your curvature that way. You know, with a healthy spine habit, your curve looks more like that. With less favorable spine habit, your curve goes this way, meaning earlier you, in life you become to a point that you are depending for daily activity. That is important. Ambulation is important. Our body is made for it. Meaning that if you are below the line that you need help, but you don't get it, you are not ambulatory, you are going to be conditioned you're going to literally, uh, uh, your cardiovascular, your heart and your lung are going to decondition, meaning that from the moment you go down here to the point that you have a heart attack is not that long anymore. So this has actual effect on how long you're going to live. But let's say this is a normal spine development and you have a good spine, you start living, but all of a sudden, no, you have a problem. You have a medical problem, like you know, spondylolisthesis, meaning bone is moving the wrong way, or nerves are pushed by the material of the disc. Then your spine curve doesn't look like that. All of a sudden, at 45, your spine, you drop off the cliff. When you drop off the cliff, what we do as a surgeon, we correct the problem to move your curve back where it belongs. Now, it just happens to be that 
spine problems are mostly accumulated in the older age, meaning that almost nobody's spine curve look like that. In natural spine curve, because when we get older, we have more problem, look like when you get above, we mostly start having that in our 40s and then the natural spine curve look like that because we all will have spine problem. So let's say now, this is the natural spine curve and mostly this is because you have spine problem. You um, have a herniated disc, you have a, 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 a spondylolisthesis or something like that. How can we move this to the, what you sh it should be without the spine problem, additional spine problem? Often we tell our patient when they have a problem, we wait because we are weighing risk versus benefit. In the open surgery is so risky, we tell this patient it's not bad enough for the surgery, it's not, not bad enough. Not bad enough. We tell them you're too young, too young. We say you're too big. We say you're too old. And we delay the care. That's what we do because we don't want to hurt them. Uh, sometimes it's just a risky to do this kind of surgery. So by the time we truly give them a care, they're already falling down here. And when we provide them a care, and by the way, many of these patients, we tell them just go live with it. They never go live with it. They go and die with it because they cannot walk, they hurt the heart, uh, the conditions, they have an heart attack, and the cardiologist, not the spine surgeon, have to take care of them. So they are risk-free to us, but uh, if you just push them to a, to a half a million dollar cardiac ICU in the last three weeks of their life. So it's more expensive, it's worse for the patient, but this is practically what we do. So they don't live with it. Let's get away with this curve. That's not acceptable. So by the time we help them, finally we give them surgery, they will never catch up with the natural curve anymore. Because not only the surgery is very um, invasive and destroys the back, but as well, it is, they already have started the deconditioning process, so they cannot catch up. Now, what we do different here is that Literally, we have our protocol. Once somebody starts going down, we have a protocol that within months, we find out what is going on. Can we help them without the surgery? And 90% of the cases, we can. But if we cannot help them without the surgery, because the surgery, minimal invasive, for example, all of procedure, and has much less risk, we are more likely to give them the option to get that surgery done. And by the way, by not destroying the back, now all of a sudden, we can put them back on a natural curvature of life without, and this is the gain of the surgery, by the way, after regular surgery. Now, we have a name for that, we call it quality. This is a term we use in the science to say how much our procedure really helps people. Now look at the difference between these qualities. If you catch a problem earlier and put them on the path to get better faster, but by the way, by being involved with us, we are able to change their life habit. You remember we said you can't have a better or worse life habit? So their curvature actually looks better even if they didn't have that problem. So they truly, we are able to push their curvature to a more favorable region, so they get even more benefit from that surgery. Now, I'm going to delete that and then come back to a point that I really important as well for people completely to understand. Let's say they have a problem they fall off, they fix them, and now their curvature is better, and we keep them ambulatory, we keep them enjoying the life, and, but still we are not making them younger. That's obviously, is common sense. Now, 
patient had a problem here in this age, and then they admit them five years later. Not all the time, but sometimes I ask the patient, how are you doing? He says, yeah, the pain is gone, and the leg pain is gone, the back pain is gone, but I still cannot do things I could do when we, before my problem. Whereas the problem was here. And what that means that they expect that from that moment where we did the procedure, actually that they have a discord, that they get better, go back in time and our spine capacity get where it used to be and even better. They want to get better and better. We have a name for that curve. We call that the Benjamin Button curve or <laughs> from the movie that the young, uh, that he, this person is born old but it get young with the age. This is a Benjamin Button curve. Benjamin Button curve or curve of eternal dissatisfaction because it's just not realistic for us to make somebody younger and uh, by expecting that it's just uh, you're going to be dissatisfied. The right? actual example of a real person uh, is that the, the 80 year old person that the leg pain was gone, the back pain from 10 was 1 of 10 meaning that practically no pain but um, he was very dissatisfied because he couldn't drive 600 miles on a motorcycle to Sturgis in a motorcycle rally. That is a Benjamin Button expectation and curve that we cannot realize. Having said that, um, what is it what at the end of the day is important for us? To keep the people independent. And that's very achievable goal. That uh, even a 90 year old person, like an example of a nun that needed three people to take care of her, but after we moved her from here, she, she was, that nurse or nun actually had a curve like that. We could fix with a two-hour procedure, do a scoliosis, segmental scoliosis, and make her independent much, much faster, much more efficient with less risk. And this is an achievable goal. Now, coming back to our curve of the spine, um, we agree that you know, this is the natural curve of the spine. But happiness of the, our life can have a very wide, it could be 100% uh, happiness. Actually, the, most of the elderly, are, it's actually study. When you get older, you are more satisfied and happy with life because you don't have to prove yourself and so on. Now, the problem will become of if you have only five hobbies and you cannot do any of them when you're older. And uh, then literally your happiness in life, if you cannot, once you are getting in this area and you have five hobbies, you cannot do any of that, you will be dissatisfied. But if you, what about if you have 100 hobbies that you still can do um, 10 of those hobbies? And that is where I, it's very important, like what we do in IS Life, we want to catch you here. When you're young, when you're active, we want you to have 100 hobbies here. So by the time when you come down, you still have 20 hobbies left that gives you joy in life. This is a realistic kind of way we can deal with the spine to keep you happy and keep you independent. That's very important. Now, contrary to uh, some of my colleagues, that in that natural history of uh, spine for them, what they are aiming is correction of one number versus another. I think for us, the goal is independency and happiness. And if we put these goals in, and we have to define that with each patient to per, uh, individually, but once we define those goals, they have to find out what is the kind of surgery. First of all, can we achieve them without the surgery? But if not, what is the kind of surgery that can give the patient that kind of return to the least amount of um, risks? So all this smallest number of, uh, smallest surgery that can give people the maximum reasonable benefit. Thank you.